What, what would you say you do here? Well, look, I already told you. I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. Earlier today, I had a fun conversation with Perch where we talked about, uh, you know, basically how he turned on America when he you know, basically crapped all over Arby's. But we also talked about some of the the editorial staff and people leaving at DC Comics. And it was it was a short bit. It maybe it was like six minutes. But I don't think people fully grasp or even realize the amount of turnover and absolute change that has happened at DC Comics recently. They are absolutely flirting with disaster. If they already aren't in a full full up disaster, we know there have been reports that essentially like interns that would have been, you know, going around getting some experience, getting coffee and stuff became the editorial staff. Once they lost so many people, they've lost so many executives and staff members. It's, it's really shocking when you look at it. Cause it's not like DC comics as like an apartment or division underneath Warner media would have been enormous to begin with. They would have had a lot of talent contracts, you know, basically, uh, exclusive contracts and then contracts for hire to, to create comic books and, and do the art and everything that they would have had a lot of that, you know, um, individual contractors. But as far as like staff, you know, your executives support staff, editorial staff, it's not, it's not that big, but when you look at the number, the sheer volume of the amount of people that have moved on, it's, it's absolutely a little bit overwhelming. I am going to name off uh, quite a few names. I'm going to give my opinions on what's being lost here and just give you an idea of how much uh, experience and corporate knowledge has been lost and why maybe, maybe DC Comics doesn't feel right right now. To me, there's only a couple of pretty good series. There's some good mini series, but really the only good ongoing to me is Robin. Otherwise, you know, there's some okay stuff. I, I don't mind the action comics one right now, but there's some really bad stuff coming out of DC Comics and things feel like they're getting worse. So, this is all going to be a part of like the first set of firings. They called it the bloodbath after the pandemic shutdown. This will include the second set of firings, the second bloodbath after the pandemic shutdown. This will also be a, a few people that left beforehand that, that might've been fired as, as well. As some people that have left on their own volition is, you know, DC is in a weird place right now. They are part of Warner media, which is a subsidiary, obviously of AT&T. AT&T is like giving that up and merging it with Discovery to create this new streaming giant platform. So everything's streaming nowadays. So you've had, actually you've had three sets of reorganizations. I'll get to the first, the actual first one happened in 2019 within the last two or three years. And then you're, you're moving over to this uh, merger with Discovery. Of course, there's going to be another set of restructurings. You know, where do we have uh, overlap as far as coverage and, and job responsibilities? And who can we get rid of? Who can we afford to cut the fat? So they're just, they're going to lose more people within the next 24, well, not, about I would say 24 months because you'll have the merger and then you have to uh, you know see how everything's working before you start firing people normally. Of course, there was a, there was a rumor that there was going to be a third set of firings anyway, but that's probably on hold now that they have the, um, the merger going on. It's probably uh, you know, superseded that idea if that was in fact going to happen that's probably off the board now or off the table so they can you know do the merger and then fire people but these are the execs that they've lost within basically the last uh, you know 24 months dan didio co-publisher bob harris editor-in-chief hank canales senior vice president publishing strategy and support services bobby chase vice president Glo global publishing initiatives and digital strategy michelle wells co-editor-in-chief Jonah Whelan, Vice President of Marketing and Creative Services. Jim Sokolowski, Vice President of Comic Book Specialty and Newsstand Sales. Adam Phillips, Director of Marketing Services at DC Comics. Sandy Yi, Senior Vice President, Global Franchise Management. Lizette uh, Osterlo, Vice President, Digital Marketing and Events. John Cunningham, Senior Vice President, DC Sales, Trade Marketing. Mark Chiarello, Senior Vice President, DC Art and Design Director. Vince Letario, Executive Director, Direct Sales. Dan Evans III, Vice President of Creative Affairs. That is a lot of corporate knowledge. That's like 
hundreds of years of experience within the comic book industry just vanished off the books for DC Comics. You can no longer, you know, turn to these people for, for advice or or, uh, or way forward if maybe you've hit a rut or something like that. I think a lot of people, including myself, I was kind of happy Dan Didio was gone as the co-publisher. He was kind of like the head motherfucker in charge at DC Comics just as far as the publishing part of it. And I just, you know, uh, as an ideas guy, I just think he was bad. I don't think he got the DC Comics universe. I think he preferred the Marvel Comics universe, was trying to incorporate that and maybe uh, transition DC Comics to something that it wasn't. Who wants, to be, who wants to read DC Comics from Marvel Light? You read DC Comics if you're a DC fanboy because you prefer that style of storytelling in the universe over Marvel. So I don't think in the big scheme of things, he was great. But he was always out there. He was always talking to people. He was talking to retailers. He was talking to um, you know the media. And he was letting people know to a degree what was going on. So there was some level of transparency under Jim Lee, uh, Daniel Cherry and um, I, I'm the name of the the new editor in chief is has lost me right now. But there is almost no transparency. They almost never talk. We got that one interview with the the Hollywood Reporter, which is a subsidiary of the same company that owns DC, and they didn't say anything. They weren't almost forthright with anything that they were saying. So that has definitely been lost with Dan Didio. There's nobody out there to really. Um, to talk to fans and tell them what's going on. You look at uh, Bob Harris, not the biggest fan of the world, but he knew the comic book industry. He's been an exec for like 30 years. Bobby Chase, well-respected person in the comic book industry. Michelle Wells had done a lot of work with uh, the YA graphic novel stuff, whether you like it or not. At least she knew like that that area of expertise, and you lost all of that. And you know the list goes on and on. So the amount of executives that they lost is really mind-numbing. Like, well, I can't believe they let all these people go likely saving themselves a lot of money <laughs> and likely getting some people on board, whatever the new direction initially for DC was going to be. Obviously it's that's at a standstill. Where are you going to go? There's nowhere to go if you're DC comics, but to sit right where you are, like almost in stasis, you can make a move here and there and just wait for whatever's going to happen next. You know, you can't really execute new strategies uh, at any kind of scale right now. Cause you're not going to get a lot of approval for that, you know, cause they're just waiting. And all these executives were, were were fired after DC had already fired a handful of executives and reorganized their entire uh, publishing line into three divisions under Bob Harris, Hank Canales, and Allison Gill in 2019. You'll recognize two of those names. They were fired. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? You do a reorganize, you put these three people in charge, and then you do another reorganize, and you fire two of them. You, you wonder why all these creators and, and uh, editors and everyone are leaving. The rats are, are vacating the ship. You know, it, it smells bad. Now, this is obviously a large-scale transition, and every company goes through a, a transition period, whether they whether it's on purpose or not. All of a sudden, you, you know, it just happens that, that a core group of people are, are moving out, and you got a replacement, and you think you're never going to get back to where you were. But you don't normally see quite this much transition. Now, as far as the support staff, uh, we uh, also, my bad, on the executive front, Sam Aids, the senior vice president and general manager of DC Universe, he left on his own volition recently. He wasn't fired, and he likely, as a senior vice president of DC Universe, had a pretty nice gig making some pretty good coin. But he, he uh, chose to give that up freely because, you know, to him, DC Comics doesn't look stable, and you can see why it doesn't look stable. And if you look at the comic books, there's a lot of issues. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the editorial staff. Now, as far as the other support staff outside of editorial, they lost Eddie Choi, who would have been the executive assistant to Ghibli. Sandy Resnick, international public publishing, ad sales, and custom creative studio. Sarah Haskell, marketing director. Michael Schelling, director of publicity at DC. Stuart Shrek, sales manager at DC Comics. Fletcher Chu Fong, events director at DC Comics, Pat McCollum, DC Universe executive editor, Eddie Scanlon, vice president, uh, DC Consumer Marketing. So there's a lot of marketing, publicity, sales kind of positions there. We do know that Daniel Cherry III, the new gen general manager that was brought in, is he new anymore? The general manager, it's a new position that Daniel Cherry III is, uh, has taken, who had no experience, zero, 
not a single day in the comic book industry before he arrived. He has a, a large background in marketing and publicity. And I imagine he was able to hire a few people in here to help him out with these things. But does it feel like the marketing at DC has gotten noticeably better? I mean, certainly they've had a couple of wins. The the DC, the Batman Fortnite was absolutely a win. That was a really good gimmick that worked. We'll see about DC the world. That's the next big gimmick they've got. But it doesn't feel like it's gotten appreciably better. But hey, we got it. Like I said, you almost can't even execute anything right now because of uh, of where they are. You can't move forward while you're waiting for this uh, merger to happen. But that's a large amount of staff that would have been helping out, uh, you know, with the marketing, publicity, sales management, going out and reaching out to retailers. And I imagine a lot of retailers noticed all these people gone because these are the people they would have talked to. And these are the people that would have got the word out of all the things that are happening. They're all gone. Now let's get to the big one, the one that I think is affecting DC Comics the most, one that we all probably see the most, are the losses in editorial staff. I likely do not have the entire list of editors that were fired or have left, but I do have a good list. And a lot of these people um, have worked on high-profile projects. We'll talk about that a little bit. But if you're noticing, the continuity at DC Comics, non-existent right now. I guess that was by design with the Omniverse. But where's like a really good, solid, you know, um, ongoing title? I say, I say, Robin, I know a lot of people are liking James Tynan's Batman. Uh, I'll disagree with you on there, but I understand where you're coming from. It's certainly uh, heads and tails above uh, what Tom King was doing, but, I say, you know, I... I've made my thoughts known about Superman, Son of Kal-El. It looked like Nightwing might rebound. I think that's not going to happen. But there's a ton of Batman comics. Can you imagine being the Batman group editor? I think that's Ben Abernathy. He's still there. That would be like the worst job in the history of the world. Like 42 comics you're, you're uh, responsible for at this time. But in the editorial staff, Brian Cunningham, he worked a lot with Jeff Johns. And he worked a lot on a lot of really high-profile, well-selling books. He's gone. Guess where he's working? Mad Ghost over at Image for Jeff Johns. He's the one that's uh, editing that book, and I imagine he'll be editing the other books under Mad Ghost for Jeff Johns, like, personally. Mark Doyle. He had worked on a lot of Batman stuff prior to Tom King. You Batman was in a great place when Tom King arrived. Mark Doyle was fired by Tom King because Tom King wanted a, an art, a specific artist to do a cover. Mark said, listen, that guy's on vacation. I'm not going to bother someone on vacation to do your cover. And he got him fired, and he brought in, um, I believe it's Jamie Rich, we're going to talk about here in a second, and out the door. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Mark Doyle. He gave Andy Corey way too much responsibility over at DC Black, or not Black Label, Vertigo, which essentially ended up ruining the line on the relaunch. Because Andy Corey's a fucking moron well documented right here on this channel, but Mark Doyle has a lot of contacts, has had a lot of success. He's over at IDW now. Andy Corey, I believe he's unemployed, unemployed for good reason. As I said, he's a fucking moron. If you type in Andy Corey thinking critical, you can see what I think of the man and the information that I have on him and his incompetence. Alex Carr, Alex Antone, Molly Mahan, Rob Levin, Harvey Richards. Those were all editors that were shown the door reason. Does it feel like editorials in a good place with DC Comics right now? It doesn't to me. And I believe those rumors that a bunch of interns with no specialty in editorial, likely no degrees or, uh, you know, primary study in the field of like literature, writing a three act story, executing things like this, are the editors, at least the, the assistant editors that are doing a lot of the day to day, uh, you know, work on these books and make, making sure they come out. Likely just doing spell check for the most part, if I'm being completely honest. Obviously, you have editors above them and then group editors. But, you know, there's a reason that you have the pyramid scheme. So, you know, the, the assistant editor can can do can find a lot of the problems. That way, as it goes up, you, you find more and more detailed stuff. But this has uh, left DC Comics in a bad place. And like I said, I don't think people have really realized we've seen all the names. But it's come out in like four batches. 
And you, when you look at it, you, you, you finally step back and you look at it big picture, like, oh my goodness, it all makes sense now. There's a reason DC Comics feels like it's an absolute disarray. There's a reason that DC Comics is in a bad place right now. It doesn't feel healthy for DC Comics, the DC Comics universe, and certainly not DC Comics characters. Like, how many characters do you think they'll fuck up in 2021 before we get this crisis reboot, which they'll probably screw up in 2022? It's the blind leading the blind at DC Comics right now. Even if you have a vetted, well-established, professional editor on these books, there's only so much work that they can do, and they're likely to be in a supervisory position where they're having to monitor these associate editors that have no experience. They shouldn't be there in the first place and likely take up a lot of their time. So you're going to see all this stuff really slipping through the cracks. And it's only going to get worse, I think, because it doesn't feel like the, the operation's gotten more professional over time. Although in one area, they did finally get their solicitations out on time again, but that took them like four months. But I don't see um, editorial staff getting better. In fact, it's going to get worse. Just recently, Jamie Rich announced that he was leaving DC Comics. Tom King's personal editor, the guy that's doing Superman, Son of kal -El. I wonder why that comic sucks. Not exactly sad to see him go, but he had a lot of experience. He's going over to Tapas. Uh, Maggie Howell announced, I believe, this week that she's leaving. Uh, D. Lopez announced recently that they were leaving for for new opportunities outside of dc comics because all these companies are moving into this market as they see the the manga sales blowing up and nobody in the d in like the traditional market as far as dc and marvel they're not capitalizing on this stuff i see a lot of indie publishers doing it specifically boom and image and um you know i, I hope that that vault and scout get a you know kind of catch on to that as well but people are seeing the market and it's available and they're going out there and they're poaching this talent from DC and there's nothing they can do. What are they going to do? They're sitting there waiting for this merger. After two rounds of firings, technically three, three rounds of reorganization with firings in the last, you know, 36 months or less. It's crazy. And then you think about the creators. They've essentially gotten rid of exclusive contracts for the most part. I had heard that the last two creators that had exclusive contracts were Scott Snyder and Brian Michael Bendis. I don't think they have those anymore. Now, they're they're ruining that because it's kind of come back and bit them right in the ass. And we did see that Daniel Sampre announced that he had signed an exclusive DC contract, and he is doing great work on action comics. Don't get me wrong. I think what he's doing is really good. But if you think about the, the creators, the long time of creators that have been associated with DC comics that have moved on, Jeff Johns, the heart and soul of DC Comics as a writer. Who writes DC Comics characters better than Jeff Johns the last 20 years? Consistently. Maybe Peter J. Tomasi. Guess what? He's gone. Have you heard anything about from Dan Jurgens? I haven't. He's written a couple things in like anthologies. Perhaps he's moved on. But that's crazy to think that you would lose two, two of the few writers that really get the, the universe and can execute with these really high profile prestigious characters and you know keep keep to the mainline story what the character is and do something new with it. Jeff Johns, Peter J. Tomasi, both gone. James Tynan, given the king well, he kind of took the keys to Batman, didn't he? He was supposed to be temporary until they rebooted after issue 100. The sales went up. He took over Batman, not an exclusive contract. They tried to offer him a new contract, he turned it down, he's moved on to Substack. And I think that's why you're going to see the creators start getting new exclusive contracts again. Nobody's getting the Batman title for a while without an exclusive that says you're going to be working on Batman for this many issues. And that's smart because this really, um, this is bad business for it. Greg Capullo, best Batman artist, probably best, certainly the best selling Batman artist of the, uh, of the last 20 years, maybe 15 years, something like that. Man, totally associated with DC Comics for quite a while. When's the last time he's, we saw him work on Dark Knight's Death Metal? I know he's working on on Spawn, some projects with uh, Todd McFarlane. I've heard rumors that he's doing other things, not at DC Comics. It appears he's not really going to be working at DC Comics much. We know he's also got a, a project with Scott Snyder, which I'll get to. Brad Walker, 
he's moving over to, to Mad Ghost with Peter J. Tomasi to work on that uh, Snipe and Slug book. Brad Walker, like his work on Detected Comics was great. Now he's moved on. Gary Franks, one of the greatest Superman artists of all time, closely associated with Jeff, Jeff Johns, illustrating Geiger with Jeff Johns. Going to be working with him. Huge loss. Freddie Williams III, not a huge household name, but that guy had a really cool style that really fit some of the projects that they were doing. And, you know, he was with the Batman TMNT. He was able to do uh, Masters of the Universe and Justice. That was a big loss. Obviously, all these creators can come back and work for DC anytime they want because they're in, you know, independent contractors. But they're out there working out of those places. Scott Snyder has a massive deal with Comixology, and he's got Substack now. And on his Comixology deal, he's got like Francis Manupal, Jock, who we do know is doing a DC book. So like I said, they can dip their toe, toes in both. But Tony Daniel, uh, he's doing a lot of stuff there with a lot of really well-known DC Comics artists. I know I've missed a few. And definitely let me know who, who I've missed. What other creators are out there that I forgot about that used to be associated with DC and, and moved on? Also, Brian Michael Bendis, who's still working on Justice League, you know, he's moved his Jinx World uh, imprint stuff over to another another um, you know indie indie publisher, which I think is great because I think he was terrible at, at DC. But it, you know, when you when you told when you put these things all together, it's like it spells doom. What the hell are DC Comics going to do? They've lost all their main creators that sold comics. Now you got to, you know, uh, promote up Tom Taylor to some projects he probably isn't ready for. He's already crapping the bed on those. Joshua Williams like, who's left? Like, what DC Comics writers puts put asses in seats anymore? I'm not really sure. Obviously, somebody's going to step up and somebody's going to do a good job and get noticed. But to have this amount of mass defections as far as creative talents that have been closely associated with DC comics for so long is absolutely crippling to the line. And trust me, they're doing a lot of marketing gimmicks that Marvel was having to do as far as uh, uh, cover schemes and stuff like that to, to make up for the fact that um, things aren't as good as they were and they are publishing way more comics than they were. Things have definitely changed. It's they're taking the Marvel approach, flood the shelves, Let's uh, see what gimmicks and schemes that we can devise to make, make our bottom line look better and make it look like we're more popular than, than we really are because they've lost so much talent. Executive talent, support staff talent, editorial talent, creative talent, DC Comics. I'm not going to say they're fucked, but they might be because that is a... when you Like I said, when you look at how many is this actually? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. Thirty-four as far as executives, staff, editorial. I'm not crowning the creators because that's a little different because they're independent contractors. Thirty-four. That is a massive amount of defections, whether it be firings or people leaving on their own volition. We're certainly seeing more people behind the scenes at DC moving on to greener pastures as they see better opportunities as DC Comics is waiting to merge. And it's just full of, you know, it, you don't know what's going to happen. How can you even feel secure in your job right now if you're at DC Comics, unless you're like Daniel Cherry and Jim Lee? And probably... Um, uh, that I, I can't believe I forgot the lady's name. The other lady, Marie Javins. <laughs> I would I forget her name. Marie Javins, the editor in, in chief. It's it's crazy, and that's why I think I personally think you see the decrease, a noticeable decrease in the quality of DC Comics as far as uh, storytelling, as far as art, and you're going to see it continue as they're hemorrhaging people. The rats are abandoning ship. We'll see if they can get things back together and get things back on track once this merger happens. But I think DC readers are in for a world of pain trying to keep up with this crap and was working up to this next uh, crisis event. My prediction. It sucks to be a DC Comics fan right now. as That's, that's coming from someone who loves DC a lot more than Marvel as far as comic books go. It just, uh, if it feels off, there's a reason because something's wrong.